Hi, it's Hannah, the stained glass artist who's goofing around with a laser water jet cutter trying to expand my little side business into something big. And sometimes goofing around is a very good description of it. This week I decided to test just how fancy the laser can go. For a little bit of background on me, I've been working with glass since I was 14. Over the years, you get a sense of how glass likes to behave and what it really doesn't like. Glass is strong, but also extremely unpredictable, especially when you push its limits. And this is helpful to understand so that I don't attempt to cut and assemble my glass pieces in a way that will cause issues over time. As an example, very thin pieces and very deep curves are some of the more challenging cuts you can do with hand tools. It's easy to accidentally snap a piece when you're scoring it, and even if you cut it perfectly, stress points in the glass can cause breaks later. I have a sneaking suspicion this won't be much of an issue for the Wazer, so let's test it out. I started by creating a spiral file for the Wazer. This was deceptively difficult to draw. You wouldn't think a simple spiral would be that tricky, but getting the shape of it right without any odd curves or weird corners or uneven lines well, it took some tweaking. I, it's also not perfectly circular like I wanted, but we're experimenting here, so it's fine. I also created a circle that could surround the spiral and added that to my software too. You'll see why later. I set them up as two separate runs of the same file so Wazer would know to stop in between them. This is one of those small things that makes a big difference. If I tried to cut everything at once, the spiral could pop out too early and mess up the second cut. Then I took that to the Wazer along with a large square of glass, and now we will see if this is going to go well or be a total waste. Start it up. Now in over two decades of working with glass, I have never seen anything like this. This piece not only stayed completely intact while cutting, but it also broke free from the rest of the glass without issue, almost surprisingly so. Usually when cutting intricate shapes, you get at least a little bit of like tri chipping or extra pieces left off, but this is pristine and holding it is wild. It almost has like a slight flex to it, like a spring. Now to actually do something with this, remember how I said I drew a circle in the software too? That's so I can make use of the other half of the spiral as well. I certainly wouldn't want to waste any glass that I don't have to. So I'll put this glass back in the machine and then run the circle file to release the remainder. And now I have two spirals I can use. And for what I have in mind, I'll actually need a couple more. So I'll just get those moving in the Wazer while I sort these ones out. Repeating the cut files is really where the Wazer shines. Normally getting multiple identical pieces of glass would be a slow, careful process. But here I can set it up, walk away, and come back to a perfect copy. Now, if you've never worked with the Wazer before, here's a quick note on how it keeps everything in place while cutting. It leaves these tiny tabs of glass to hold a piece in the sheet so it doesn't float around in the cutting bay while the machine is working. So that means that I just need to clean up a couple of these spots on the edge of the glass and then give everything a good wash. I'll do the same to the second set coming under the Wazer as well. Um, and to clean up inside of the spiral lines, I have to use a specialty mini grinder bit. It's like one of my little favorite tools. I've used it in a previous video as well. When I have both of these cleaned up and ready, I can just slot them together, and now I have an alternating color spiral design. This looks incredibly cool, but it's definitely not for a Tiffany stained glass application. This glass really barely likes staying in this form, and there's no chance I'd be able to foil it, which is where I wrap copper foil around the exterior of the piece so that I can solder it together. Um, so, considering I didn't want to give up that foiling and exasperation, I instead I'm deciding to put it in the kiln. Uh, now, if I just fuse this as is, it wouldn't hold its shape well for what I want, so I'm adding a layer of clear glass to keep everything sort of locked down. Guess what I cut that circle with? <laughs> yeah, I just tossed that back in the Wazer and used the circle file, so it's the same size as the circle or, or the um, circle spiral I already have. Now I just need to let it fire overnight and we'll see how it turns out. And here we go! The full thing fused together makes this awesome disc of precise spiral glass. I love how clean all the lines of the design turned out, and there's absolutely no way in a million years I could cut this by hand. It's basically a water jet only concept. Now I have to decide what to do with this. I used some earlier test versions just as a like a sheet of glass, and I cut them all up to make one of my little cactus sculptures with it. But with this one, since it turned out so perfectly, I want to keep it intact. So I'll get one of my other kiln tools out, which is this slump mold, and fire it in the kiln a second time. This will give a gentle curve shape and turn it into something more functional. Once it's fired again, here's the final result. It's a beautiful slumped glass, glass plate with a precise spiral pattern. I love how the light plays off the design, and it's amazing to think this all started just as an experiment. If you handle and cut glass as much as I do, feeling the way this glass moves before fusing is one of the most unbelievable things. 
I'm so happy I pushed the limits with the design and that it actually worked. The Wazer is capable of so much in terms of pure production, but beyond that, it's doing things that all my traditional glass cutting tools can't really dream of. I'm so excited to start thinking about what I can try next with the Wazer. Follow along for my next project.